To me, Global Reach Out is inspiring. It's connecting with God, reaching out to the world, and impacting life. The stories that are shared is so personal and it deeply impacted me. Global Reach Out to me is reach out to the truth. Connecting hearts, connecting lives. You're listening to Global Reach Out. In this episode, I want to talk about leadership styles. Leadership experts recognize that there are three basic styles of leadership. And they are assertive, adaptive, and passive. From another angle, we can rephrase this as autocratic, democratic, and laissez-faire. Now, all three styles has its strengths and weaknesses, but all three styles can be used depending on the context and the situation. Both forceful as well as enabling are required. No one can truly lead without making his or her presence felt, taking strong position, setting high expectations, and making tough calls. But that leadership would be hollow and ineffective without the ability to delegate responsibility seek others' input, show appreciation, and provide support. So there's a balance here. Effective leaders assess the situation and the factor in the people they are dealing with and the state of affairs, and they use all combination. For example, assertive leadership. This is more effective in times of crisis and urgency when the leader is most knowledgeable and has privileged information and the people are interested but not committed to serve. So you need assertive leadership. On the other hand, adaptive leadership is more effective when team members are highly skilled, eager to share their knowledge, when time is not of the essence and when the team members are educationally on par with one another. This is the moment when adaptive leadership, or we call democratic leadership, comes to play. Finally, passive leadership, or we call laser fair leadership, is more effective when the team is skilled or experienced and self-motivated, and the leaders are available for consultation and feedback. Leadership models. There are several leadership models, and one of them is leading by example. This is the most commonly applied. Effective leaders know that they have to lead by example if they are to lead effectively and exert positive influence on others. Leaders are storytellers, a phrase by Howard Gardner. They tell their life stories. For the stories to be effective, their lives must embody those principles. How does one lead by example? An excellent model is the five practices of exemplary leadership designed by James Cousins and Barry Posner, which consists of the following. Model the way Inspired shared vision, challenge the process, enable others to act, and the fifth, encourage the heart. In the contrast to servant leadership is the ego-driven leadership. Ego-driven leadership operates from emotional insecurity and spiritual immaturity. It makes activities its highest aim because they are equated with accomplishment. It places rules above relationships, policies or projects above people, protocols over priorities, and convenience over conviction. Ego-driven leaders seek to maintain a status quo leadership and uses people as ego boosters to achieve goals. Ego-driven leadership is averse to criticism and adopts a closed mindset to suggestions 
and is reluctant to own up to failure. Such a leader takes credit for success, but blames others for failures. Dogmatism seems to be the approach taken when it comes to hard matters and hard issues. Consequently, self-sufficiency hinders an ego-driven leader from asking help from others, while pride leads to an indulgence in self-glorification when it comes to reports marked by a tendency towards exaggeration. That is an ego leader. On the other hand, a servant's leader operates from emotional security and spiritual maturity. Such a leader pursues God's agenda for others' benefit rather than for personal benefit and agenda. He seeks to influence others through persuasion and not push people to align with God's purpose. A servant's leader is characterized by humility and sacrifice. Servant leaders are God's catalysts who have learned the art of seeing the bigger picture, enduring and creating change, as well as raising the bar and challenging people to reach it. As faithful stewards, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1-2, who are given a sacred trust, they do the right things for the right reasons. A failure to understand and practice servant leadership will lead to a paradigmatic shift from doing our job to keeping our job. Instead of doing our job, we are trying to keep our job. As a result, we lose our spiritual focus, forget the ultimate, and concentrate more on the immediate. Biblically, true servant leadership multiplies values to others by enhancing, serving, and developing the potential of others under their leadership. At the heart of servant leadership is the willingness to give up our basic rights, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 5, while emphasizing our responsibilities and owning up when things go awry. Give up our rights, but yet own up when things go wrong. A third model which I like to propose for effective leadership is what I call the impactful biblical leadership, IBL model, which will be elaborated in the forthcoming episode. Next, I want to talk about the dark side of leadership. One of the accompanying dangers to leadership is the dark side of leadership. Leaders are human beings with flaws and feelings as they make mistakes. Every leader has a dark side, whether he or she acknowledges it or not. The phenomenon of having a dark side in a leader could be due to one's past experiences. Horrific things have been done in the past in the name of leadership. For example, genocide. So as the prophet Jeremiah in the Bible says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Jeremiah 17 verse 9. And so people often project fantasies on their leaders and they must be managed properly. Otherwise, leaders lose touch with reality and think they are infallible. When that happens, they are setting themselves up for a crash. According to Kirk Hansen, the Achilles heel, the Achilles heel of leaders include the following areas. Number one, believe that they know it all. Believe that they are in charge. Believe that the rules don't apply to them. Believe that they will never fail. Believe that they did all these things, achievements by themselves. Believe they are better than the little people. Believe that they are the organization. And believe that they can focus everything on the job. These are the Achilles heels of leaders. How then do we redeem our dark side? Gary McIntosh and Samuel Rima suggest the following practical steps. Step one, acknowledge your dark side. Step two, examine the past. Step three, resist the poison of expectations. Step four, practice progressive self-knowledge. 
And finally, step five, understand your identity in Christ. As we come to the end of this episode, I want to leave us with three discussion questions. What statement strikes you the most about leadership styles? Are the steps outlined by Gary McIntosh and Samuel Rimmer practical? The five steps. Which of the three basic styles of leadership do you subscribe to? Thank you and stay tuned. The program is proudly presented by Global Reach Out. We welcome you to share our live enriching webcasts with family and friends through our website, global-reachout.org. Let's reach out to bless more lives together.